these are again ideal traits that you want to kind of like be involved in or take it every time you see it. Why? Because these are exactly what we always wanted, right? You enter a trade within the shortest time possible. It just goes in your direction. You just manage it. It's so easy in terms of psychology and emotion. Okay? Uh, we'll talk about New Zealand franc first over here. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the daily, okay, uh, I think this is very obvious, right? You have a push up and then this is like the correction that's happening. We have the fit expectation here as well. So this is a pattern that's very clear, potentially another push to the upside back to this high. Okay. So that's where the opportunity is. On the four hour time frame, again, this is a pattern that we all can recognize, right? Very, very slow to down move after this impulse push. And um, this is another point that I want you to take note is this is still coming down, but ask yourself how, right? How is it coming down? It's coming down slow. That's one sign. And it's potentially developing the third time it comes down here in this entire structure, right? So all this are stacking up. Okay, and whenever I see something like this, of course, we don't execute it today, but um, maybe another two days, we might have that trade in. Okay, these are things that we, for me, I'll take it over and over again, whether eventually when we take this trade, if it plays out or not, these are trades that I'll take over and over again, right? Because there's so many elements stacking in together, the probability is definitely there. Okay, so uh, if you pull in your RSI and things like that, definitely the divergence is there, right? The pattern itself tells us that. So give it maybe another day, okay? If let's say this develops into a very, very clear diagonal or a crawl like that, we'll take the trade back up towards this high, okay? And the risk reward is definitely there, right? So give it another one or two days, uh, but definitely you wanna keep an eye on New Zealand franc for the week, okay? Now, okay, uh, another one here is Kiwi franc. Uh, we talked about this yesterday as well, right? We were expecting this to come back down towards this low because most of the time, if that's so close to it, price tends to break it. Uh, you can see this low has been broken too, but the part here is how is it breaking, right? It's breaking very, very correctively, okay? So you can see this move coming down is just very slow. Now, if I bring you to the one hour time of daily first, right? So daily, you can see this is the why, This is the reason why we want to look for it, okay? You have that push up, then a correction. So we expect another push to the upside. So the daily give me that, direction okay the final target that i can potentially aim for and then on the lower time frame we are looking for entry okay what i like about this you can see also right on a four hour time frame we have like this is the tr this is the third time okay that price comes down and of course at the same time uh if you look at one hour or even four hour you start to see that divergence okay maybe one hour not yet but what I want you to see is that we have a smaller crawl within this as well, right? So if this develops into like a one hour crawl, then you have like the four hour crawl on the bigger scale. And then you have that one hour crawl at the bottom of it. Okay. So you have like patterns within another pattern. Okay. And this are where the probability starts to stack up. Okay. So if I show you like daily, okay, daily, we have this correction down. Okay, four hour, we have this correction down. And then at the same time, we have this minor crawl here, which comes in at the third touch of this trend line. Okay, so you have few elements, right? And then if you go down to the one hour time frame, what I'm seeing here is that this can be the smaller crawl. So you have a crawl within a bigger crawl within the third touch and within a larger flat. Okay, so again, it's not going to be a 100% sure win thing, but this kind of things adds up the probability. Okay. Now, um, there are two ways we can look at it for execution. One is a little bit more aggressive. The other is um, slightly more conservative. Now, to be aggressive, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll start putting in a pending buy here. Okay, maybe just above this slightly high and in a bit of spread. That's about 6490. Okay, um, that's definitely a little bit aggressive because um, this can just comes back up, go back down, you know, and then form a big, bigger crawl, right? On the one hour, that's possible, okay? Uh, but at the same time, this can be done because you can see this here more or less has that three touches as well. So this can just bounce up correction and then, and then keep going up, right? So that can happen too. So the, the advantage of being a little bit more aggressive is of course, um, you want to capitalize on this if this just goes, okay? Uh, but the disadvantage of being a little bit more aggressive is that what happens if this just forms a bigger one, 
right? And then you get tagged in and then probably this would still be a, a losing trade, um, you know, if you if you are more aggressive, okay? Um, the stops will be somewhere around 6470, which is a 20 bit stop loss. Um, yeah, around there, right? Very, 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 very tight stop. So your risk to reward ratio is definitely very worth it. Okay, now um, let me just put this in roughly, right? So that we can take a look at a potential risk to reward ratio. Okay, now let's just say we are conservative, right? Even here is about 2.5 already. Now let's say we are conservative and we target this immediate high. That risk to reward ratio is about one is to seven, very, very solid. Okay, now if this takes off and go all the way to the daily target, that is one is to 13. Okay, uh, so if you ask me, is it worth that risk? Okay, um, I, I, I would say definitely, right? Based on the risk reward, um, I would say that's definitely worth the risk. Okay, um, things are setting up very nicely. The only part here, again, the downside of being aggressive in this trade is um, the probability that uh, this can eventually still do something like that. Okay, which means it can tag us in, come back down, and then only go eventually, right? So that's the only downside risk that I'm seeing right now. So if you ask me, um, I'll be happy to put this trade in. Okay, um, from a one hour time frame perspective, um, let's be a little bit more conservative and put our target somewhere near this top, okay, um, for now, okay, so that would put us around 6640. Okay, solid risk to reward ratio anyway, right? Somewhere around that. Okay, so, um, yep, I'm going to put this in. This is on New Zealand front, right? Okay, now what I'll be more interested at if I want to trade the Aussie, okay, um, to the upside, right, is to focus on Euro Australia instead, okay? Now, the context here is very clear. You can see on a forward time frame where price is right now. Okay, it's at the previous high, right? And it broke it. The question is how it's breaking it. It's breaking it very, very slow, okay? So whenever I see something like this, I know the downside is there, okay? And uh, of course, on the daily time frame, uh, you know, the momentum is due to downside. Um, what we are seeing here is definitely the correction, okay? So from that perspective, you can see if I'm interested to get involved in the bullish Aussie position, Okay, instead of Aussie dollar, I would rather focus on Euro Aussie because of how much room it can drop. Okay, uh, and of course, in terms of like the context of where this pattern is happening, it's happening at the previous high. It has a crawl, solid. Okay, now if I go down to the one hour time frame, you can you can very clearly see this is very slow already, right? So I'm not gonna be surprised if let's say price make another small high and break this top. Okay, if I were to remove that. Uh, that can happen, right? Which means that this breaks it another top and then you get that clean one, two, three diagonal for the move, right? That can happen, okay? And, and that's one of the expectations I have, but it does not need to, right? Because it can easily just be this high and then from here, it gets a double top maybe or even not and then it just drops, okay? So for me, uh, one way to get involved in this trade is obviously to look for this breakout over here. Okay, at the, at the minor low somewhere around that area. Okay, so if I were to round up a little bit, uh, 56.5, right? Um, yep, that's it. Okay, my top, my stops can be, let's say, just about there. That's a 60 pips of stop. Okay, uh, and let's say I go back to the forward time frame to look for my target, right? A very short term intermediate area you want to keep an eye on this is here. We're going to shift our stops when price hits there. Okay, and uh, we can potentially target all the way back down. That will give us around 5.8, okay? So it's a very decent trade setup, okay? Even if that say this don't take off all the way, it's here, it's, it's still decent, right? It's more than one, two, three, okay? So I'll put my target here and um, that's how we're gonna look at this trade. Okay, let me see. Hey, another one here that we talked about yesterday is um, Kiwi Frank. Okay, and um, we got tagged in and then um, I, I told you guys to shift stops to break even on the Facebook group, right? Um, and you should have got out at break even, okay? Um, if you didn't right now, I think you're just like that tiny bit of profit, right? We, we kind of took this one hour, very, very minor break, okay? Um, so that's part of it, okay, uh, of trading. You can see that we were anticipating this break and then from there, it starts to do a correction and then keep going, right? It didn't. 
right? But you want to ask yourself, even though the execution did not go as what we want, the trade didn't go as what we want, we got out at break even, but did that whole piece of structure change? Okay. And if you take a look at it from even on a one hour time frame, right? Nothing has changed because this move here is basically part of the bigger piece, which is still a crawl. Okay, which is still a crawl. You get an impulse and then you get a crawl. So every time you see this, we know probability is to the upside. Okay. Nothing has changed. Even on a four hour time frame, basically, that is really nothing, right? We are still seeing this one time, two time, three time, and we have a crawl here. Okay. And this crawl is again more or less done. Okay. That's the reason why we are looking at it to, to have our orders in as well. Okay. So for today, um, just an update of this, okay, because of how price has developed. Okay, so this one here definitely needs to get updated. Uh, we're still looking for the buy, but the entry price here will shift towards, okay, um, let me put this here, right? So somewhere around, if I would like to add in that spread, okay, I would say, Okay, we can do six. Oh no, okay, the the line's not there, right? The line is around here. Okay. Um, let's add a little bit of spread. So let's do our entry around six five one five. Six five one five. Uh and our stops is gonna go just below that structure low right now, is around six four seventy. Okay, so it's still the same, um, just the entry, we're going to shift it a little bit higher. Okay, target is definitely still the same, right? 6640, right? It's, um, sorry, let's aim here, right? 6765. Okay, 6640 is a little bit more conservative, okay? Um, somewhere around here, but uh, I think the final target, let's go for up there, right? One is to six, definitely very solid, okay? Now, I think this trade here today will probably get involved in it, okay? And ideally, what we want to see is a very strong push impulse, okay? And then we just shift our stops to break even, and um, we want to see a correction and then just keeps going, right? That's what we want to see, okay? So I think today we'll get involved in this trade, looking at how price is developing right now. Uh, next up is Euro Australia, right? So yesterday, we we're looking at 5605 to get involved in it. Uh, basically, nothing much has changed, right? Um, you can see that market is just going up and down, but it's very slow. Okay, now if I bring you to the one hour time frame, uh, one way to be a little bit more aggressive, okay, it's getting very, very close is to shift it here, okay, and of course, the stops I can even be a little bit more aggressive and squeeze it, something like that, right? Um, this is definitely a little bit more aggressive, but I think, um, you know, this, this diagonal in terms of time expectation, you can see is solid, right? Okay, you have like a few couple of touches at the top. So more or less, I think this is more, uh, is ready to go. Okay, and in terms of context, you can see where this is forming. Okay, previous top at there. Okay, so a potential double top as well on a higher time frame. Okay, so this year, I think we can consider something like that. Um, it's definitely a little bit more aggressive because this can just come down, tack it, and then go back up, forming, continuing, forming a bigger one before the move, right? Um, that's the risk, okay? But uh, because if this is tight enough, then our risk to reward ratio is gonna be very, very attractive, okay? So that's the part where I'm thinking, okay, I'm am I willing to take this as a loss for a potential target, right? You can see a very conservative one to this low here is already 2.5, okay? And we are not aiming there. Uh, we are actually aiming all the way down with our final target somewhere around Five two fifty, right? So that risk to reward ratio is definitely, definitely very, very big, right? Um, yeah. So this is how I'm gonna look at it. Uh, oh, it's moving now. Okay. So I would say if you're looking at it, um, we'll probably want to start um, considering. Okay. So let me put this in. Okay. Um, give me a moment. I'll probably want to set this and onto mine as well, right? Great, okay. So mine is set in, okay, 5620. Okay, that would be the entry, right? 1.5620, okay. Um, stops, we're gonna put it at 5660. And the uh, target here is 
five two fifty, right? So it's it's the same, right? Five two five five, right? Okay, so um, yep. Let me take a screenshot of this. Okay, so yeah, so this is getting very very close. Okay, so um, I think we might have an Australia news. Okay, maybe not. Okay, <laughs> maybe the market is just deciding to move just like that. Um, yeah, right. So we do not have any news. Uh, I think the market just decide to move. So let's see how it goes, right? Um, again, this one here is similar to New Zealand franc. Um, we'll likely get involved in this trade. Okay, I think we're we probably in by the end of this session here anyway. Okay, so that's the tree. Okay, good. Now, um, let's first get started by updating you guys on the trades that are involved in. Okay, uh, and I think this are really, really, again, uh, I think for the past two weeks has been fairly easy. Okay, and um, again, not, I do not want you guys to just focus on like um, the results or the profits, okay? Because I think what's more important over here is that while it's nice to kind of enjoy some good results, right? But at the same time, uh, these are also, as it, I always say this, right? Whether is it a winning trade or a losing trade, there are always lessons to be learned. Okay, so over here, um, you know, this two weeks, there are tons of lessons here that we can pick up as well. Okay, so first off, um, we are in like New Zealand franc and Euro Australia, right? These are just trades that we talked about yesterday. And these are again, ideal trades that you want to kind of like be involved in or take it every time you see it. Why? Because these are exactly what we always wanted, right? You enter a trade, within the shortest time possible, it just goes in your direction, you just manage it. It's so easy in terms of psychology and emotion. Okay, but I want you to of course know that not all trades are gonna be like that, right? Um, but what we can fall back again is always about the patterns, the probability, the statistics, right? Always fall back to this because these are the only thing that you have control over with, okay? So first up over here, let's talk about how we can manage these two positions. Uh, for New Zealand franc over here, I've decided to shift the stops to 6570. Okay, um, let me show you on a one hour time frame where that is. Okay, it's somewhere around this white horizontal line, just at the minor low here. Okay, so we are protecting quite a good chunk of profits um, by doing that. Okay, now the reason for me to shift it over here is because uh, I don't expect this to come down here before the pops. Uh, if it does, I'll be more than happy to get out anyway. I think um, risk reward wise, this is about one is to 1.5 or somewhere around there. Okay, so I'm happy to capitalize on whatever we have so far. Uh, I do not want to give back too much of a profits. Okay. Um, because what I expect here is that this just keep continue pushing up and then only somewhere around here should it, do, should it do a bigger correction, okay? So in any case, I do not expect it to come back down. If it does, I'll be out, okay? Um, the reason for that is again, uh, when price is so near, back to the forward, right? When price is so near in this structure here, you do expect it to consolidate at some point in time, right? Which is somewhere around that area. Okay, so from what I'm seeing here is that as long as price don't come back here, we have a very good chance for it to keep going up. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Uh, I think this again is, is exactly what we want, right? You see this pattern here, we enter the trade. Um, there wasn't even much of a drawdown almost instantly. It just goes in the, in the direction that we want. Okay, so uh, again, these are the trade that you want to write on the impulse, okay? And this is the area of the trade that you do not want to be in, in a corrective phase, okay? Now, very similar to it is, of course, um, Euro Australia. You can see almost instantly this trade just takes off, right? Yesterday, we talked about it, and today we are in good in some good profits. Um, that's exactly how you want to be trading, okay? You do not want to get yourself involved in this chunk, but you want to write this chunk, okay? So same thing over here. Um, yesterday on the Facebook group, we have shift our stops to 5570, okay, which is somewhere here. So we'll maintain that, okay, we'll maintain at 5570. I do not want to over, over squeeze this because what I'm seeing here is that this is forming a consolidation, right? So um, of course, if this just goes sideways, that's fantastic. The probability is next, continue to the downside. 
Okay, and we might even get a scale in on Euro Australia if that happens, right? So let's see how it goes for now. Um, and what I like about this is you can see where this consolidation is happening, right? It's actually happening below this, below this entire structure. Okay, so again, we talk about a lot about context over here, right? Where the pattern is happening, uh, and the context of of that, okay, you can't stack up the probability. Okay, so you can see this correction is actually happening below this corrective pattern low. Uh, that's crucial because if this pattern here is happening below that, okay, the probability to the downside is greater. Okay, but if let's say this pattern here is happening above it, then you want to be con cautious because then that can be the double bottom, right? But right now it has broken that, so the probability to the downside is still pretty high. Okay. So I do not want to over squeeze our stops. Okay, so let let it have some room to breathe. Uh, of course, if this comes up very very strong like that, you can kind of exit it before even tag your stops. Um, you know, if it's a V shape. Okay, so we need a little bit more time to see how it's going to develop. But so far, what I'm seeing here is this can be a flag. Okay, if that's a flag, we'll look for a, we look for a scale in. And we'll just keep writing this down all the way back towards this structure low. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Um, these are the two trades that we have, right? 